Today, I want to focus on the fundamental aspect of presenting our best selves in the journey of life. It's common to think that the path to success is always smooth and every step we take leads us forward without any setbacks. However, let's be honest with ourselves. Life rarely unfolds in such a straightforward manner. The truth, although sometimes difficult to accept, is that setbacks and failures are not just occasional occurrences, they're integral to our journey. Allow me to share a personal story with you. A few years ago, I encountered a setback that deeply impacted my professional life. I had invested all my time, money, and energy into a venture that I believed would undoubtedly succeed. Yet, despite my best efforts, it failed. I remember sitting in my office late one night, staring into the darkness, feeling a weight of defeat I had never known. It felt as though the world had stopped believing in me, and worse yet, I had stopped believing in myself. But here's the thing. Feeling defeated is not the end of the story, it's merely a chapter. It's what we do when faced with these chapters that defines our path. This brings me to the heart of what I want to share with you today. Resilience and perseverance are not just buzzwords, they're the very essence of overcoming failures. It's not about never falling, it's about how we choose to rise after we fall. Now, let me ask you, have you ever faced a moment in your life where everything you had worked for seemed to crumble before your eyes? What did you do in that moment? Did you let it define you, or did you see it as an opportunity to learn, grow, and push forward? The beauty of resilience is that it's not a trait you're born with, it's one you develop. It's a decision to get up when life knocks you down, to learn from the experiences that didn't go your way, and to keep moving forward with the knowledge that each setback is a setup for a greater comeback. So, how do we cultivate this resilience? How do we ensure that we're not only able to face our failures but also use them as stepping stones to greater success? The first step is to recognize that failure is not a reflection of your worth but a universal experience that holds valuable lessons for those willing to learn. Think back to a time when you overcame something you initially thought was insurmountable. What did that feel like? Hold on to that feeling because it's proof that you have what it takes to rise above, no matter how many times you fall. I remember, the best side isn't about hiding your failures, it's about showcasing your ability to overcome them. It's about demonstrating resilience and perseverance in the face of adversity. And most importantly, it's about understanding that the path to success is a mosaic of experiences, both good and bad, that shape us into individuals capable of achieving greatness. Woven with the threads of experiences, aspirations, and dreams, there lies a universal thread common to all. This inevitable facet of existence, often shrouded in negative connotations, is not a marker of personal worth nor a signpost of inadequacy. Rather, it's a testament to the courage to strive, to reach, and sometimes to fall short. It's essential to grasp this intrinsic aspect of failure. It is a shared human experience, not an isolated incident that befalls the unlucky few. Every individual who has dared to dream, to aspire beyond the visible horizon, has encountered failure. It is as inevitable as the changing of seasons. Yet, despite its universality, society often casts failure in a harsh light. There exists a stigma around falling, a silent yet potent societal pressure that equates falling with weakness, with losing. This perception permeates through the fabric of our interactions, shaping how we view ourselves and others in moments of vulnerability. The fear of failure then becomes not just a personal battle but a societal one, where the act of falling is seen as something to be avoided at all costs, rather than embraced as part of the learning process. It's crucial, therefore, to redefine our collective understanding of failure, to shift the narrative from one of defeat to one of opportunity, growth, and resilience. This redefinition begins with each one of us, in how we treat our failures and those of others. By changing our perspective, we can change the culture around failure, transforming it from a source of shame to a wellspring of insight and innovation. Imagine a world where failure is not met with judgment but with curiosity, where the question is not, why did you fail? But, what did you learn? Pause for a moment and reflect. Think back to your most recent setback. Recall the initial sting of disappointment, perhaps even the shadow of doubt that crossed your mind. How did you react? Did you see it as a reflection of your worth or as an opportunity to grow? This reflection is not just an exercise in introspection, but a step towards embracing failure as an integral part of your journey. The true measure of our strength lies not in how we avoid falling, but in how we rise after we fall. 
It's an understanding that every setback, every failure, carries within it the seeds of wisdom and growth. When we start to view failure through this lens, we empower ourselves to learn, to adapt, and to persevere as we navigate through our own stories of trial and triumph. The understanding that failure is not the antithesis of success but a stepping stone towards it. Hold on to the knowledge that our worth is not defined by how many times we fall but by how many times we stand back up, fortified by the lessons learned. There's a concept that stands as a beacon of hope, a force so potent yet so understated. Imagine resilience as the very fabric of our being, a material that no matter how stretched or compressed, always returns to its original shape. It's our ability to bounce back from the adversities and challenges that life invariably throws our way. Our innate capacity to emerge from difficulties not just unscathed but stronger, wiser, and more determined. Now, you might wonder, how does one cultivate this remarkable quality? How do we ensure that when the storms of life hit, we're not just enduring but thriving, using these challenges as catalysts for growth? The journey to building resilience is both simple and complex, woven from the threads of mindset shifts, self-care, and realistic expectations. Start with our mindset, the lens through which we view the world around us. It's about shifting our perspective from seeing challenges as insurmountable obstacles to viewing them as opportunities for growth. This doesn't mean dismissing the pain or difficulty of these situations, but rather acknowledging them and asking, what can I learn from this? It's about cultivating a mindset of growth where every setback is a setup for a comeback. Equally important is the practice of self-care, the art of nurturing our physical, emotional, and mental well-being. It's about recognizing that to weather the storms, we need to be in our best shape, and that means taking care of ourselves. It could be as simple as ensuring we get enough sleep eat nourishing foods, or engage in physical activity. It's about giving ourselves permission to rest, to recharge, and to seek support when needed. Setting realistic expectations plays a crucial role in building resilience. It's about understanding that while we may strive for excellence, perfection is an unattainable and often destructive goal. It's about setting goals that challenge us that are within the realm of possibility and understanding that sometimes, despite our best efforts, we may fall short, and that's okay. It's not about lowering our standards but about setting ourselves up for success by recognizing our limits and working within them. Let me share a personal story that embodies the essence of resilience. There was a time in my life when I faced a profound setback. A project I had poured my heart and soul into fell apart. The disappointment was palpable, the sense of failure overwhelming. In the aftermath, I found myself at a crossroads. I could either let this defeat define me or use it as a stepping stone. I chose the latter. The journey wasn't easy. It required me to dig deep, to confront my fears and insecurities. I had to shift my mindset to view this failure not as an endpoint but as part of the process. I focused on taking care of myself, ensuring that I was mentally, physically, and emotionally equipped to tackle the challenges ahead. I set new, realistic goals, understanding that while the path might be different from what I had envisioned, it was still leading me towards my ultimate destination. This experience, though painful, taught me invaluable lessons about resilience, about the incredible power we all possess to overcome adversity. It showed me that resilience is not just about surviving but about thriving, about using our challenges as catalysts for growth and transformation. As we navigate the complexities of life, remember that resilience is within each of us, waiting to be nurtured and cultivated. Approach challenges with a mindset of growth, take care of ourselves, and set realistic expectations. And when we find ourselves faced with setbacks, remember that these are not the end of our story but an essential part of our journey. Opportunities to demonstrate our resilience and emerge stronger than before. Each of us plays a role, defined by the script of our choices, actions, and yes, our failures. But let me share with you a perspective that has the power to transform the very essence of how we view setbacks. Imagine, if you will, that each failure we encounter is not a blockade but a disguised lesson, hidden guideposts pointing us toward paths we might never have explored, strengths we didn't know we possessed, and insights that can propel us forward in ways we hadn't imagined. The failures that we so often dread and try to avoid are, in reality, cloth lessons, opportunities masquerading as obstacles, waiting for us to uncover the wisdom. They hold, but to unlock these lessons, we must first shift our mindset. We must look beyond the immediate pain and disappointment of failure to see the potential growth and learning it offers. 
This shift is not just beneficial, it's essential for anyone aiming to achieve great things. It requires us to adopt a mindset of adaptability, to be fluid and flexible in the face of change, and to view each setback not as a final verdict on our capabilities, but as a stepping stone to greater achievements. Consider, for a moment, the process of learning to ride a bike. The falls, the scrapes, they're all part of the journey. With each fall, we learn something new about balance, about speed, about the importance of persistence. Without those initial failures, the joy of finally gliding effortlessly on two wheels would never be realized. The same principle applies to every facet of our lives. Each failure brings with it invaluable lessons that, once embraced, can illuminate our path forward. Now, let's delve a bit deeper into the essence of adaptability and growth. To grow from failure, we must be willing to adapt, to reassess our strategies, and to be open to new possibilities. This adaptability, this flexibility in thought and action, is what allows us to navigate the unpredictable waters of life. It enables us to take the lessons learned from each setback and apply them to future endeavors, to adjust our sails when the winds of circumstance shift unexpectedly. But growth from failure is not a solitary journey, it's a collective human experience. And there's incredible power in sharing our stories of setbacks and resilience. So, I invite you now to turn to the person next to you and briefly share a lesson you've learned from a past failure. Take a moment to do this, and as you share your story, listen to theirs. You'll find that in sharing our vulnerabilities, we discover our shared strength. I hope you found that exchange enlightening. Sharing our experiences of failure and growth not only helps us feel less alone in our struggles, but also reminds us of the common thread of resilience that binds us all. It highlights the importance of a growth mindset, but viewing each failure not as an endpoint, but as a catalyst for development, for re-evaluation, and for renewed effort. Let me remind you that the journey toward achieving our dreams is often a patchwork of successes and failures. Each piece, no matter how seemingly insignificant or painful, adds depth, color, and texture to the masterpiece that is our life. The failures we endure are not mere stumbling blocks, but stepping stones. Each one a lesson in disguise, teaching us, guiding us, and preparing us for the successes that lie ahead. Remember, the power to learn from failure, to adapt, grow, and ultimately succeed, lies within each of us. It's a choice we make, a perspective we adopt, and a journey we undertake armed with the wisdom gleaned from every fall. So embrace our failures, uncover the lessons they hold, and move forward with the confidence that in the grand narrative of our lives, Every setback is an opportunity for growth and every failure a disguised guidepost leading us toward our greatest achievements, where each of us is both the author and the protagonist of our own story. There comes a moment, a defining moment, when we stand at the crossroads of what has been and what could be. It's in these moments, often birthed from the ashes of our failures, that we are presented with a golden opportunity, the chance to start anew. Imagine holding in your hands a blank page, an untouched canvas upon which you can paint the dreams of tomorrow without being tethered to the setbacks of yesterday. This is the beauty of embracing new beginnings. It's the understanding that every day, every moment offers us a fresh start, a chance to redefine our journey and move closer to our aspirations. But how do we seize these new beginnings? How do we ensure that this fresh start propels us toward our goals and not back into the cycle of past mistakes? The answer lies in the power of setting actionable goals. I'm talking about SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This isn't just a catchy acronym, it's a roadmap to success. It's about taking those lessons learned from past failures and using them to construct goals that are not just dreams but destinations. Imagine setting a goal so clear, so well-defined that you can almost touch it, see it, feel it. That's the kind of goal that moves you, that pulls you forward even when the path gets steep. But setting goals is just the beginning. The journey toward achieving them is where the true challenge lies. It's in staying the course, maintaining focus and motivation despite the obstacles that will undoubtedly arise, and they will arise. The path to success is seldom a straight line. It's fraught with detours, roadblocks, and unexpected storms. So how do we stay the course? How do we keep our eyes on the horizon when the seas around us are churning? First and foremost, it's about belief, self-belief. It's about nurturing that inner conviction that you have what it takes to achieve your goals, no matter how lofty or far-fetched they may seem to others. This belief is the anchor that holds you steady, the compass that guides you through the stormiest of seas. 
But even the strongest of ships needs a crew, and that's where the importance of support systems comes into play. Surround yourself with people who believe in you, who support your dreams, and who are there to lend a hand, a word of encouragement, or a listening ear when needed. These are the people who will celebrate your victories and help you rise when you fall. They're an integral part of your journey, a reminder that you're not alone in your quest for success. And when the obstacles seem insurmountable, when the weight of your goals feels too heavy to bear, remember why you started. Reflect on the progress you've made, no matter how small, and let that fuel your determination to press on. Celebrate every milestone, every step forward, for these are the tangible markers of your perseverance. Moving forward with courage is not the absence of fear but the mastery of it. It is the decision to take the first step and then the next, armed with the lessons of the past, the clarity of well-defined goals, and an unwavering belief in your ability to overcome. It is the understanding that setbacks are not the end of the road but signs that guide us toward our final destination. Commit to accepting each failure as a stepping stone, set goals that challenge and inspire you, and stay the course with unwavering focus and determination. Let's move forward not with panic but with courage, knowing that we have the power to create our destiny, to turn our dreams into reality. I want to take a moment to reflect on the journey we've embarked upon, exploring the realms of resilience, the invaluable lessons tucked within our failures, and the unwavering courage that propels us forward. The essence of what we've discussed isn't just about overcoming obstacles but about transforming our perspective to see setbacks not as barriers but as gateways to growth and self-discovery. Let me share with you a story that resonates deeply with the message we've woven today. There was once a young entrepreneur whose first venture failed spectacularly. Faced with mounting debts and a tarnished reputation, the path ahead seemed bleak. Yet, instead of allowing this failure to define his journey, he chose to see it as a profound learning opportunity. He meticulously analyzed where things went wrong, took to heart the lessons learned, and with a resilience born from his setback, he embarked on a new venture. This time, armed with the wisdom of his past failures, he succeeded beyond his wildest dreams. Today, he stands as a testament to the power of embracing failure not as the end but as the catalyst for greater achievements. This story mirrors the message I hope you carry with you today. The understanding that each setback, each stumble, is not a mark of defeat but a stepping stone toward your grandest aspirations. It is through the fires of our failures that our resilience is forged giving us the strength to rise time and again with a courage that is undeterred by the specter of past defeats. Look at your next blow with a new lens. See it not as a defeat but as an opportunity to grow, refine your perspective, and get closer to your dreams. Take a lesson from today, whether it's the power of resilience, the gift of learning from failure, or the courage to keep going, and apply it to your life. It is the light that guides you through the storms, the anchor that keeps you steadfast amid the waves of doubt and fear. I want to express my deepest gratitude for the privilege of your time and for your openness to embracing a new perspective on failure and resilience. Your presence here is a testament to your commitment to personal growth and to the journey of self-improvement that lies ahead. Remember, the path to success is rarely a straight line. It's a mosaic of experiences colored by our triumphs and our setbacks, each one contributing to the masterpiece that is our life. Thank you for allowing me to share this journey with you. As you step into the future armed with the lessons of today, remember that within you lies an unstoppable force, a resilience that can weather any storm, a capacity to learn from every setback, and a courage that propels you forward undaunted by the challenges that lie ahead. Let's move forward not with trepidation but with the confidence of knowing that we are equipped to face whatever comes our way. Together, let's embrace the journey, setbacks and all, and march toward our destinies with resilience, wisdom, and unwavering courage. Thank you. We're going to talk about the principle of cooperation because your ability to get along with others will determine your success in life more than any other single factor. Some years ago, the Carnegie Institute of Technology analyzed 10,000 employees who were let go from their positions over a period of seven years. They found that 95% of the people who were let go from their companies were let go because of their inability to work well with others. 85% of all the problems you will ever have in life will involve other people. The very best way is to practice the golden rule, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Practice the law of sowing and reaping. If you want people to be cooperative with you, you must be cooperative with them. Treat everyone with courtesy, kindness, and patience. 
Remember, every person you meet is carrying a heavy load. If you practice self-discipline and have a clear sense of purpose, if you are good at what you do and accept complete responsibility for your actions, you strive to serve others with what they want and concentrate on your highest payoff activities, you will tend to be a positive, self-confident individual, and you will have no trouble getting along. Your power in business, industry, or politics will always be determined by who you can call upon for help and assistance. You build your power base by seeking out every opportunity to assist others with no immediate expectation of return. Of course, this strategy presupposes that you are excellent at what you do. You can only build power within an organization of value to the degree to which you are excellent at what you do. If you attempt to build a power base to compensate for a lack of excellence, what will happen is that it will just be perceived as cheap politics, and it will seldom work out. You will always do better with a plan than without, so prepare, prepare, prepare. The power is always on the side of the person with the most knowledge and the best notes and the most thorough preparation. In interacting with others, a key to cooperative relationships is to be a good listener. Here are some keys to effective listening. By the way, most people are very poor at listening, and if you become just a little bit better, you'll be amazed at the difference it will make in your interactions with others. Listen without thinking at the same time of what you're going to say. As soon as a speaker takes a breath, listen quietly, patiently, and calmly without interrupting or attempting to interrupt. If you allow three to five seconds to pass before you respond, you will be conveying to the other person very clearly that you are carefully considering the other person's remarks and you are avoiding the risk of interrupting. One other advantage to pausing is that psychologists tell us that you hear better when you pause before replying because the words that the other person has said soak in, if you like, and you get a better understanding of what the other individual actually means. Feed it back in your own words to make it clear to the other that you fully understand and you've been listening carefully. Remember, in conversation, the person who asks questions has control. All open-ended questions cannot be answered by yes or no. Examples are what, where, when, who, why, and how. These are all questions that encourage the person to expand on the subject. In building cooperative relationships, practice the law of indirect effort. The law of indirect effort says that in our relationships with others, we almost invariably get what we want more rapidly by indirect means rather than by direct means. There is nothing that will so impress another than for you to be impressed by them because then the other person will become very interested in who you are and will respect your judgment and your discernment. Another example of the law of indirect effort is if you want others to be interested in you, be interested in them. If you want others to like you, like them. If you want other people to respect you, then respect them. If you want others to believe in you, believe in them. If you want to have a friend, be a friend. The law of indirect effort is the key to effective relationships with other people. Now, here is an extension. Here are some of the keys to cooperative human relations, and they all start with acceptance. Acceptance means accepting the other person unconditionally for exactly who they are without judgment and without reservation. Acceptance or rejection is something that takes place with every interaction, and we are attuned from childhood to be very alert to whether or not we are accepted or rejected by others in social interaction. And the finest and simplest way to express acceptance is in a conversation is simply to smile. Whenever we smile at another person, it not only puts them at ease and raises their self-esteem, but when you smile, it releases endorphins in the brain and gives you a feeling of well-being and contentment. Another key to cooperation is appreciation. I think the two most beautiful words in any language are, thank you, please, and thank you, will get you just about anywhere you want to go. And one of the best things that you can do to build self-esteem in your children is to say thank you to them for everything they do for you. And one of the best things that you can do to build a happy home is to say thank you to your spouse for everything they do, small or large, around the house. Another key to cooperative human relations is approval and praise, which is to acknowledge and recognize when people do things, and when they do things well. Some of the keys to approval and giving approval are, first of all, be sincere. Never express approval unless you believe it, unless you actually genuinely feel that the individual has done something that is praiseworthy. Another key to approval is to be immediate. If somebody does something, give them the praise immediately afterwards. Praise delayed is usually praise that has no effect at all. If you would like to develop a habit in another person, praise continuously until the habit is developed. If you would like to maintain the habit, then praise intermittently afterwards. 
In other words, praise the person every second or third time they do it to maintain the habit in place. Another key to cooperative human relations is admiration. Abraham Lincoln said, everybody likes a compliment. And the two things that you can quite safely compliment people on are their traits or their possessions. People are very proud of their personal traits. Compliment people on their possessions. Praising a person's children, praising a person's house, or praising a person's clothes, furniture in their house or in their office, will always be greeted well by the other person. It raises the other person's self-esteem and makes them far more receptive to working cooperatively with you. And finally, agreeability. Be agreeable. Be an agreeable person. Be the sort of person that people like to have around because you are not argumentative or difficult. And even if you disagree, ask yourself always, how important is this? And if it's not important, let it pass. One of the characteristics of people that we always enjoy is that they smile. They say thank you. They praise and approve our behaviors and actions. They admire our possessions. And they're agreeable. And they're easy to get along with. Remember this, that in business and in industry and in all organizations in our society today, all work is done by teams. And your ability to work well on a team and your ability to build an effective team to get the job done is going to determine your success as much as any other single factor. So here are some keys to encourage teamwork. Number one, make sure everyone knows what you are trying to accomplish. Make it clear that everybody on the team knows what the goals or objectives of the team are. Make sure that everybody knows why you are trying to accomplish it. What is the reason? What is the purpose? Who will be affected? And how much? People will go a long way to help you achieve the what if they know the why. Make sure everyone knows exactly what they are expected to contribute individually. Give ample praise and recognition for performance. The basic rule with regard to team building is to give lots of praise and recognition in public. Give criticism and constructive feedback in private. Personally accept 100% responsibility for anything that goes wrong. Take the blame and share the glory. Exceptional executives are always those who, if a person does not do the job, accept that it is their responsibility of having put the person in the job in the first place. Remember, people make mistakes, and it often happens that you will put a person in a job for which they are not suited. If that's the case, it is not the person's fault. It is the fault of the executive who put them in that position, and it is the responsibility of the executive to remove them. Never criticize, condemn, or complain. It lowers morale and robs people of self-esteem. Remember, everything that you do that makes other people feel good about themselves boosts your own self-esteem and makes you a more dynamic, successful person. The real key to cooperative human relations is to treat everyone as though they were the most important person in the world, a million dollar customer. And, as I said earlier, your ability to get along with others, your ability to function well on teams, your ability to work well in meetings, and to cooperate effectively with other human beings more than anything else determine the height to which you will rise in your field or industry. Thank you. Everything in life and business is about relationships. Your ability to form the right relationships with the right people at every stage of your life and career will be the critical determinant of your success and achievement. The more people you know and who know you in a positive way, the more successful you will be at anything you attempt to accomplish. For goals of any kind, you will need the help of many people. Who are they? You need to develop a strategy to work effectively with each group. Start with your business. Make a list of everyone who works inside and outside of your business. Your boss, your colleagues, your co-workers, subordinates, and especially your customers, suppliers, and vendors. Which of these people have a greater ability to help you or hurt you in the achievement of your business or career goals? Then, point out that everyone is in the business of customer service, no matter what they call it or what they do. A customer can be defined as anyone upon whom you depend for success and advancement in your job or business. A customer can also be defined as anyone who depends on you in any way. For example, your boss is your primary customer in work. Your ability to satisfy your boss will have more of an impact on your future, your income, and your career than any other single action you take. If you displease everyone else but your boss is delighted with you, you'll be safe and secure in your job. If you please everyone inside and outside your company but your boss is unhappy with you, that problem alone can short-circuit your future. One of the best strategies you can use is to make a list of everything that you believe you have been hired to do. Then, take this list to your boss and ask your boss to organize this list in order of his or her priority. What is most important to your boss? What is second most important? 
what is third most important, and so on. From that moment onward, discipline yourself to work on your boss's top task all day long. This will do more to help you in your career than any other single decision you make. 86% of the senior executives selected two qualities as being more important for career success and advancement than any others. First, the ability to set priorities to separate the relevant from the irrelevant. Second, it was the ability to get the job done fast, to execute quickly. There is nothing that will help you more in your career than to get the reputation for being the kind person who gets the most important jobs done quickly and well. But the sad thing is that if you do an unimportant job very well, this could actually hurt your career and even threaten your job. Be sure that what you're doing today is still your boss's top priority, then make a game of doing it fast. Your co-workers who also depend on your work are your customers as well. Go to each one of them and ask if there is anything that you can do to help them. The fact is that people think about themselves and their own job all day long. You should look for every opportunity in your work to help people and to do nice things for others. The more the people next to you, above you, and below you like you and support you, the more you'll get paid and the faster you'll be promoted. Look for ways to be a valuable resource to the people around you, and they will automatically look for ways to help you and support you when you most need it. Perhaps the most important quality you can develop for long-term success in your business is that of being a good team player. To be a good team player, always come prepared to every meeting, sit opposite and in direct eye contact with the person who's running the meeting, speak early and ask questions, volunteer for assignments, and when you offer to do something, do it quickly and well so that it is clear who the go-to person is in the company. As a result, you will be given more and bigger jobs, with both the authority and the rewards that go with those jobs. Take time to get to know your subordinates and the people who are below you on the corporate ladder. Offer to help them if you can. Be especially kind and courteous with them. Go out of your way to compliment them and to recognize them for their work. You will be amazed at the difference this makes in your career. In every organization, the person who knows the most people is usually the person who, like Crane, rises to the top. Outside of your business, you should get involved with your industry and your industry associations. Look at the business organizations in your community. Once you've decided that it would be useful for you to be a member of one of these organizations, join up and begin attending every meeting. Here's the best strategy of all for networking. Select an important committee within the organization and volunteer to work on that committee. Once you join the committee, volunteer for assignments. Even though this work is unpaid, these activities give you an opportunity to work with and perform before other key people who can help you in your career sometime down the road. The more people that you know and work with in your industry, the more doors of opportunity there are that will open for you when the time is right. As you read your local newspapers, make a list of the top people in your community. As you gather these names, write a letter to each of them. Send something that is non-business related, such as a copy of a small book, a poem, a newspaper clipping, or anything that might be of interest to them based on what you've read about them in the papers. Each time that you see a reason to communicate with that person, drop them a note. Often, it won't get through or make direct contact, but continue to sow seeds, and sooner or later, what goes around comes around. Eventually, you will end up meeting a key person socially or in business, and they will remember that you dropped them a letter a week, a month, or even a year ago. No effort that you make to expand your contacts will ever be completely lost. Some will yield results immediately, some will not yield results for many months or even years. You must be prepared to be patient. Make it a point to associate with the kind of people that you like, admire, respect, and want to be like. Sometime in the future, the choice of a positive, goal-oriented reference group can do more to supercharge your career than any other decision you make. At every turning point in your life, there is usually someone standing there guiding you in one direction or another opening or closing the door for you, or helping you in some way. If you're really serious about being the best and moving to the top of your field, you cannot afford to spend much of your time with people who are going nowhere in their lives, no matter how nice they are. You must set high standards for your friends and associates and refuse to compromise. Your choice of the people you associate with will have more of an impact on what you become than any other single factor. The third category of people whose help and cooperation you will require are your family and friends. It is absolutely vital that you invest all the time and emotion necessary to build and maintain a high-quality home life or relationship. Life problems at home distract your attention and drain your energy, 
It can often sabotage your career. Throughout your career, you will be required to go to what are called deliberate extremes. You will have to work long hours and often many days without breaks or vacations in order to take advantage of an opportunity or to complete a project. Be sure that you discuss these deliberate extremes in advance with the members of your family so that they understand what is happening and why you are doing it. Always treat people with kindness, courtesy, and compassion. But that all, the simplest strategy is to treat everyone you meet at home or at work like a million dollar customer. Treat the other person as though he or she is the most important person in the world. Treat them as though they were capable of buying a million dollars worth of your product or service. Every day, in every way, look for ways to lighten the load and help other people to do their jobs and live their lives more easily. Now, here are three things you can do immediately to put these ideas into action. Make a list of the most important people in your work and business life. Develop a plan to help each person in some way. Make a list of the most important people in your personal life. Determine the kind of relationship you want to have with them and what you will have to do to achieve it. Identify the groups and organizations in your community and your field that it would be helpful for you to join. Phone today and arrange to attend the next meeting. Music, 